Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Hannah Payne. I am the um, Director of Carbon Neutrality in the City of Boston's Environment Department. Um, the review board does not have a does not currently have an appointed chair, so I will lead us in a vote for an acting chair. Would any of the board members like to nominate an acting chair? Uh, make a motion to nominate Lee Matsueda as acting chair. Is there a second? Second. second. Great. I will now lead us in a vote. Um, how do you vote for the motion to nominate uh, review board member Matsueda as acting chair? Um, let me just see if I can see everyone. Um, board member Boyd, don't has she joined yet? I don't see I her. Oh, left. there she is. She's there. She's yeah. in her yeah. car. Yes. I let her live. She said in favor. So in favor. I'll say in favor next. <laughs> thank you, and thank you, board member Ellis. Uh, Jake, uh, board member Jacobs. In favor. Board member Lattimore. Aye. Board member Matsueda. In favor. Board member Nelson. In favor. Board member O'Malley. Aye. Board member Palmer Dunning. In favor. Great. I will now hand over the meeting to Acting Chair Matsueda. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Hannah. Uh, good afternoon. I'm calling this public hearing uh, to order at 4.34 p.m. Uh, in accordance with the Building Emissions Reduction and Disclosure Ordinance Regulations, adopted pursuant to the Building Emissions Reduction Ordinance Disclosure Ordinance, Boston City Code Ordinances Section 7-2.2, uh, the Berto Review Board will hold a virtual public hearing at 4.30 p.m. on December 4th to review the following topics in regards to the reduction of greenhouse gases from the building energy production and consumption so as to promote the public health and welfare of Boston residents. Uh, in accordance with the Commonwealth Mass of Massachusetts executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, we are conducting this meeting, a uh, public meeting online. Um, to ensure public access to the deliberations of the Berto Review Board, the public may access this call through telephone and video conferencing. Members of the public will have an opportunity um, uh, to ask questions. Um, and so to do so, you can raise your hand or type in the chat um, via the application of the Zoom meeting platform. And if you're calling in and you can't use that platform, you can raise your hand by pressing star nine. You can also send your questions to staff via email at Birdo Review Board, all one word, at boston.gov. Um, Right. So for the record, I am Lee Matsueta, uh, acting chair of the board. I'm now going to conduct a roll call of board members. Um, board members, please say your name in the order that they appear on the Rashida Boyd. Stephen Ellis. Lavette Jacobs. Gail Adamore. Lee Matsueta. Jack Nelson. Matt O'Malley. Kai Plummer Dunning. Fantastic. And uh, almost a full house. And we also have um, some fantastic staff with us today. Please um, introduce yourself. I can't reach the mute button. Sorry for that. Hannah Payne, uh, City of Boston Environment Department. Hi, everyone. Claudia Diaz Martinez, Environment Department. Okay, thank you. Um, so we're, here's the agenda for today's meeting. Um, you know, we're going to, uh, like we always do, start with the approval of our meeting minutes from our, our last meeting in November. Um, you know, there aren't, I think, a ton of updates, but we're going to hear some updates uh, from staff. Um uh, following the APCC hearing, and um, and that apparently will include some comments received from the last comment period, um, and revised draft regulations on hardship compliance plans, and the equitable emissions fund, fines and enforcement, and other miscellaneous clarifying topics. Um, we'll then uh, shift over to administrative updates and adjourn adjourn the meeting. So. 
yeah, it's a little bit of a, a you know different meeting. There aren't um, massive decisions that we're going to have to make. We are going to vote on the the meeting minutes first, um, and then have more of a discussion um, after some updates um, in the second agenda item. So, any any just questions about that before we we move on? All right. Uh, so, for our first um, agenda item. Um, we're just going to take a look at our previous meeting minutes from um, November 20th. And uh, uh, just want to start by asking uh, board members if you just have any um, questions or comments, uh, edits regarding the meeting minutes. Anything? No questions. Motion to approve the meeting minutes as presented. Thank you, Board Member Malley. Uh, is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, so for um, all board members in favor, can you please say aye or raise your hand? Aye. 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 Um, are there any board members that need to abstain or they that were not here? Okay. And are there any board members that are opposed? Okay. The ayes have it. Thanks, everyone. Um, and yeah, we'll make be sure to make sure that those notes are up and available to the public on the website. Wait, quick clarifying. Um, oh, sure. Uh, board member uh, Matsueda, um, would you abstain from the last meeting since you were in tennis? Oh, correct. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That makes complete sense before we, uh, yeah, I do abstain. <laughs> we have to change uh, my vote. Thank you for catching that guy. No Appreciate it. So with that, I think we have still, uh, approval of board meeting minutes with one abstention being me. Um, thanks for that guy. All right. So if there's nothing else, um, let's move on to our second agenda item. Um, and so this is gonna be an open discussion on um, phase three regulations development and Berto reporting and implementation. Um, I think there are a couple questions that have been sent ahead of time but um yeah are there just any updates or comments from staff before we we jump in um to some of the questions and then obviously what we'll do uh board members are just kind of go through the whole uh we'll, we'll do a couple rounds through our list to see if you all have any additional questions um regarding uh phase three development which i guess is um on track right to be um, finalized and approved later this month at the AP APCC hearing. So, um, but yeah, staff, any just other comments or things you want to make sure you share with board members before we kind of go into our round of questions? Sure. Thank you for that. So um, I don't have any formal presentation. I did um, include the couple of questions we received ahead of time that I can go through in just a moment. Um, just for some framing of the section, I know that we have presented a lot of information on regulations um, over the last several review board meetings and really wanted to give the opportunity for review board members if you have further questions, suggestions, ideas on the regulations um, that have been drafted um, to create some space to ask those those questions this evening. Um, so if uh, Chair, if it's okay with you, should I jump into the couple questions we received ahead of time and then we can take it from there? Is that a good place yeah. to start? I'm Great. happy to do that, sure. Okay, so um, received a couple questions ahead of time um, and I can answer both of these. So the first was around um, kind of, this is not specific to the regulations that we are looking at currently in phase three. Um, this is um, a question about emissions factors and we set emissions factors um, 
to be used in Birdo in previous phases of regulation. So these have already been adopted. Um, but the question is around why did we use ISO New England um, emissions factors? And ISO New England is our electric grid um, operator. Um, there are a few different entities that can put out information on um, emissions factors for the electric grid. So as a reminder, the emissions factor is basically a measure of how clean or dirty um, a fuel is, and we need one of those for electricity as well. Um, and for electricity, when we do when we look at that, it's what is what are all of the power plants um, that are connected to our grid that are feeding electricity to our homes and buildings? Um, how dirty are those plants? So the more that we have from renewable energy, like solar and wind, the cleaner our emissions factor is going to be. There are a few measures of um, a, um, there are a few measures of um, how we can look at that emissions factor. Um, EGRID is one that is used in Energy Star Portfolio Manager, so that's a federal um, measure. Um, and that acronym uh, is just for the New England region. Um, the challenge that we have with using the emissions factors that are in Portfolio Manager is that they're always a couple years delayed. So I believe the latest we have data on is 2021. Um, and so when we're looking at Birdo, which is an annual compliance, um, it's really important to have that annual, that reflection of what the grid is doing during that year that buildings are looking to comply. And the reason why we think that's especially important in a place like Massachusetts um, and New England is we are always adding more renewables to the grid. Um, and so we want people to be able to take advantage of that and to benefit from those commitments that our state has already made to decarbonize the grid. So what we've proposed in Birdo is that we will be, um, and what we'll not just proposed, what has been adopted in the regulations is that we will be using data from ISO New England. So we'll get actual, they have really good data on what power plants are on and off at certain times of the um, throughout the year. So we can use that and follow a standard methodology to calculate our own um, emissions factor for Birdo that's based on actual data that is of how the New England grid is operating. The um, the reason that we're doing it with our own uh, calculations is that ISO New England also comes out with their own number, but again, it takes a long time to go through a verification process. It's a few years delayed. So that is very in the weeds. Happy to pause and answer any questions on that since I know that was starting with a really detailed question, um, but I think it's an important one to answer. Uh, board member Ellis, it looks like your, your hand is up. Do you want to um, have some follow-up on this? Sure. Just um, for clarification, Hannah, uh, from what I'm hearing, it sounds like what you're pulling from Energy Star Portfolio Manager will strictly be the KWH or the kilowatt hours, to be specific, of, of what the building owners submit and not the emissions that Portfolio Manager is generating. So you will be pulling the, the electrons or the kilowatt hours and converting them within the environment department is that correct that is correct so that is a really good clarifying question um so for those of you who might be less familiar with portfolio manager than board member ellis um uh the within portfolio manager building owners report all of their energy usage so how much electricity they're using how much natural gas they're using, if they're using diesel or fuel oil, how many, how much of that fuel is delivered and used. Portfolio Manager as a platform will do some calculations to estimate emissions for that building based on their default um, emissions factors. Most of those are what we are also using in Birdo, but because Portfolio Manager is a national standard that is um, platform that is standardized across the U.S. It's pretty rigid in terms of not being able to input custom factors that are more location specific. And so within Birdo, we will, we're taking the data from Portfolio Manager that is on how much energy is that building using, and then we're doing our own calculations based on 
Boston specific emissions factors um, to calculate those emissions that will be used for compliance. And a plug that I think we've mentioned this before, um, we have a calculator tool um, that helps building owners do this. So we have, it's now been, we have it ready. Um, we haven't fully released it because we don't have the like instructions to go along with it. Um, but that is, um, it's a tool that is ready. So building owners can plug in their Birdo ID and see those estimated emissions with those calculations um, contributing to that. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Okay. So the the next question I received ahead of time was, what is the regulations timeline and does anything come after phase three for regulations? So um, I did put together just quick slides on this to remind the board of all of the regulations process that has happened and kind of where we're at in this larger process. So um, we, as a reminder, we broke the regulations up into three phases for Birdo and by I would say three is now a generous term um, since you'll see there are kind of some more sections of this. Um, but phase one was adopted back in March of 2022, and those um, set the rules around reporting and data verification requirements. So that allowed us to move forward with annual reporting and data verification under Birdo 2.0. Phase two, um, we adopted the first chunk of that in December of 2022. Um, so this was regulations on establishing the review board. So this board, um, the setting rules for blended emission standards, how to handle change of ownership, designating a tenant as an owner, and some other clarifying regulations. And then in January of 2023, we adopted regulations on renewable energy purchases and emissions factors. So that's kind of to the point of what I was just speaking about. The, those were covered in phase 2B. Um, so when we adopted back in January. Um, and then phase 3, again, we kind of split it up again. Um, we started this phase back in March um, and have been uh, we're able to adopt regulations on building portfolios and individual compliance schedules in September. Um, and we are working on um, finalizing the regulations on hardship compliance plans, equitable emissions investment fund, fines and enforcement, and then additional regulations and some cleanup of regulations as needed. So we're going to fix a lot of typos that we, <laughs> we found. Um, so those are what is currently um, under review for public comment right now. Um, so the public comment period um, is open on those final topics of, for phase three. Um, we presented the um, revisions to the Air Pollution Control Commission on November 15th. The public comment period is open until um, through December 13th, so that's next Wednesday. And then the following Wednesday on December 20th, um, we will present uh, re responses to comments and any revisions made based on those comments to the Air Pollution Control Commission. If the revisions that um, we recommend to the Air Pollution Control Commission are minimal, then the commission could vote to adopt the regulations. Um, if there are significant changes that need to be made, then they could open a second comment period. Um, our goal from um, kind of when we set out on phase three was to have these um, was to get the regulations adopted by the end of the year. So at this point, we are on track with that schedule. But again, it will be a bit dependent on um, the comments that we receive and if we identify the need to make any additional significant revisions to the draft as it stands now. Um, and I think the other piece of that question was, is there anything beyond phase three? Um, no, we are, <laughs> we hope this is, um, you know, our, we've really tried to put everything into um, the phases that we laid out. This is really what we see as like the end to the, this big regulations effort. Certainly as we go forward with implementing, if there are, you know, major issues that we identify and or things that we identify that need to be 
fixed or clarified, there is an opportunity for the board to um, make recommendations um, for revisions to the Air Pollution Control Commission and could reopen regulations. Our hope is that this will be, you know, as you've kind of noticed probably from the extensive process that we've gone through with regulations, they're not the easiest thing to update. And so um, we, you know, expect that the once the board or sorry, the commission votes to adopt the phase three regulations that this would really close that and it would take something significant to go reopen the regulations process again. Um, there will be I know there's we've heard some um, requests for information to help make the regulations translate into a more uh, user friendly language and to really understand that. And that's something that our team is going to be working on. So we'll have be working on a number of guidance documents to go along with the regulations. Um, but that will be more on the communicating outside, adding a little bit more of like a clarification but not um, updating the regulations beyond phase three. And those were the two questions I had uh, received ahead of time, but I will turn it back to you, Chair, and happy to take more questions that folks might have. Great, thanks Thanks for all that, Hannah. Any just um, follow-up comments or questions from the board members regarding uh, kind of that whole, um, uh, you know, response to some of those questions? There's any other uh, feedback or questions people have related to that. I see uh, board member, um, board member Lattimore, you want to start us off and then, and then we can go to board member Ellis. Thank you, acting chair. Um, yeah, I was surprised um, to hear and thank you for that update. I really appreciate it, um, Hannah. But I was surprised to hear that the board can actually recommend to the um, APCC, I guess, that to reopen the reg processes. I thought that there was only a certain period of time that the regs could be reviewed or revisited. And I thought it was like every five or so years or some something. I thought that was maybe a statutory thing, but, but it sounds like it's not. I I'm, just want to clarify, did I misunderstand that? So the board I, and um. Body, if maybe if you have a specific language that you can find for us from the ordinance, um, uh, the board can make recommendations to the commission. Um, I believe I don't believe there's a specific time limitation to that. What I will say is that it is it is important to have the regulations be. Uh, set and have those expectations clear for building owners and compliance. Um, so our intention is that the, um, you know, that the regulations in this phase will kind of set everything. Um, however, you know, as I mentioned, if there are things that we didn't anticipate in as, as things get implemented, the board can make recommendations to the commission if there is something that, for example, needs clarification. It could be something small or it could be significant, but we really hope that this will um, be all encompassing, that will that we've written the regulations in a way that gives the board enough flexibility to have discretion to make decisions, that there's enough clarification for building owners on what they need to um, submit all of that, because the, it is quite a intense process to do regulations. And um, again, that certainty for building owners is important as we're moving into, you know, enforcing and, and implementing this this ordinance. Yes. Well, thank you. I mean, I agree yeah. that needs clarity and there has been a lot of time and energy for sure put into yeah. this phase. I was just, I thought when we when we all had our orientation as, as board members, I thought I remember something about the regs cannot change for a certain period of time, but maybe I'm misremembering something. But we will we'll follow mm -hmm. up on that. Um, okay. Well, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, board member Ellis. Yes, thank you. Um, our second board member Lattimore's uh 
uh, thoughts there because I, you know, I, I don't remember if it was an additional timeline, but I know it was listed like the ordinance can't be changed, the regulations are hard to change, but the policies can be changed as much as possible. But I just don't remember what time frame was associated with the regulations. So if the city can provide clarification on that, that would be helpful to me as more, as well. Um, Regarding the question that was asked about beyond phase three, I guess I'm trying to envision what next year is going to look like, you know, because uh, quite a few of the building owners will have submitted their um, their individual compliance schedules or the building portfolios, although the city is encouraging building owners to do so. I'm just trying to understand like what the next few months, especially, you know, January through through the, the the deadline of the reporting is going to look like for our board. So I'm wondering if you can sort of give us a vision because thus far we've been focused on our comments on the regulation. Yes. Um, so for when the regulations are um, adopted, the kind of starting in January, we expect that there will begin to be applications for flexibility measures um, coming before the board. Um, I think so because portfolios and individual compliance schedules, those regulations have already been adopted. We have um, draft application materials. We expect to be doing uh, a bit more of like outreach and, and awareness raising on uh, how to apply for those measures as well as for hardship compliance plans starting in the new year. So probably not, I don't expect in January per se to be start to be busier, but we might start getting in applications. Um, and I think they will continue to build up throughout the new year. The deadline to apply for a hardship compliance plan um, as drafted would be July. Um, so I think we'll ex the board can expect um, kind of a, uh, a busy period before that or right around that time in terms of receiving applications. Again, there will have to be staff review of that, so the timing may change a little bit. And then um, I believe it's September 1st for both portfolios and individual compliance schedules um, as the deadline. So again, probably like more applications coming in over the summer. Um, the standard reporting deadline just to report data is May 15th. Um, I don't anticipate there being too much that the board will need to do um, on that since that is pretty set um, and we are, you know, we run that every year. There isn't like a lot of board decision making that is required around that. Um, so really kind of as the applications ramp up, um, which I think will happen throughout the year, I think the winter we might see them trickling in and then a heavier um, influx starting in the spring. Is my is my guess. We'll see how things go. Thank you for the clarification. Uh, I mean, like like board member Ellis, I have I have a lot of questions or just thoughts about kind of the next phase. But bef maybe before we kind of keep taking questions or discussion there, are there just other comments or questions, kind of specifically regarding um, phase three regulations that uh, people have specific comments or questions that they want to make on the board? And um, and then I think we we can. I, it's no problem to spend time kind of thinking about what's ahead. But um, maybe we can we can continue the line on phase three for for now, and then move to um, kind of what's next. So do board members just have uh, what? Here's what I'll do. I'll just kind of go down the list and um, uh, go one by one, and we'll kind of circle back again. But um, just to see if any of you have questions. So um, board member Boyd. Do you just do you have any comments or questions you'd like to you'd like to bring to the conversation? Uh, no, not not right now. No. Okay. Thanks. Uh, board member Ellis, if you don't mind, I'm going to go to the next uh, board member Jacobs. Yeah, I don't have any questions at the moment. Okay. Uh, board member Lattimore. No, thank you. Okay. Um. I guess I I started looking at this, uh, and I was just curious if there, what level of detail there is. I don't think it's in the regulation. So, um, I specifically this relates to the equitable emissions fund, and um, my understanding of what I read is like we can hold an application process 
once a, uh, one site, at least one cycle a year, giving like some 30 day window of notice or something like that. Um, I guess my question is like, as a board, do we just, when we look at our calendar, are we just setting that at some point later in the, you know, in the year or as we go into 2024, um, kind of what's the expectation about how we set that date? Um, and is there anything specific in the regulations that actually gives us guidance on that? Yeah, so the regulations say that there needs to be at least one per year. Um, so there isn't, you know, the regulations aren't more specific than that. I think to give the flexibility of when might make the most sense in a given year. Um, for this first year, um, there, uh, you know, I, we as as staff can help think through when might make the most sense. Um, I think we would like to be able to open up um, some opportunity early in the new year um, and can work with the board to see when might make the most sense to do that. Um, but that that is another piece that, you know, is something coming in 2024 that will be on the board's agenda. Thanks, Hannah. Um, Claudia, did you have something you want to you want to add? Uh, yeah. So just a reminder that also maybe this was the last round of regulations we added that the review board will uh, develop a um, project review form to be used for funding decisions that oh, yes. shall be presented also at a public meeting. So I think before opening that, there will be that step of producing that evaluation form. That's right. Okay, thank you. I have a couple other questions more related to the, the next you know, steps in, into 2024. So I'll hold on that. Um, let's go to board member. I think board member Nelson had to switch over to his phone. Are you with us, Jack? Any questions or comments? He might not be able to do that if he's on, on the phone right now. We'll, we'll come back to you, Jack, if you have other, other questions or comments. Uh, board member O'Malley. Yeah, just on, on phase three and to follow up, uh, Lee, on the Equitable Admissions Investment Fund, are we bringing on, um, I know I know staffing, there is a lot that's gonna fall on the shoulder uh, of our, our incredible colleagues here from the city. Is there gonna be, some, is there gonna be a dedicated point person uh, to help oversee the fund uh, dispersion and manage that, or will that Hannah sort of come under you or Claudia or, or someone else? Well, I'm. Thank you for the question. I'm happy to report that um, we're in the process of hiring a review board assistant who would support Diana as okay. review board manager. So would help both with kind of all aspects of it, like the administration of the review board, including the equitable emissions investment fund. So there will be a little bit more support there. And then the rest of the Birdo team as well um, may lean in, lean in as needed on all of these aspects that are coming in 2024. Good, because I think it'll be similar um, to the CPA, the Community Preservation Act. When we pass that, it um, and that's admittedly is a lot more money, but there's an incredible, there's an entire team. So I, I guess I would just suggest um, this is a great opportunity when the new council is seated uh, to work with them to identify potential, um, uh, you know, uh, grantees or partners that might be interested. The, the CPA had a really robust process. Uh, and the staffing to back it up, but made sure they got into every community, talked about it, helped uh, uh, bring folks into it. So I, I, I know it's a lot of work. Don't want to put it all on, on your shoulders. Glad to hear Diana, who does an excellent job, is going to have some support as well. But I think there's some other opportunities to tap into some folks to um, at least raise awareness and potentially get some great, um, uh, great partners out of it. So that's all for phase three, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Board Member O'Malley. Um... And then uh, board member Palmer Dunning. Uh, great. Um, more so just kind of a clarifying question. So I know that right now we're in the formal comment period for the hardship compliance plan and equitable admission and equitable in admissions uh, investment fund. Um, but there was a kind of informal comment period where we did get feedback. So I'm just wondering if those that feedback is reflected in um, the draft that we have of the the draft regulations we have for both um, 
for both uh, the hardship compliance plan and fund, or are we waiting until after the common period to um, to to add those um, uh, comments? Yeah. So the um, the revised draft that is out for public comment now includes is revised based on feedback we received during both formal and informal public comment periods, um, and. Claudia could probably get the timeline of that better than I did since I came back from leave right in the middle of one of those. Um, but that we have an extensive response to comment as well. So that we shared um, in the public folder um, that's on the website um, and I believe was shared uh, directly with this board as well. So we've responded to all of the comments we received during the um, um, during the uh, informal comment period and during the formal comment period and have responded to those comments and incorporated that feedback into the revision where possible. Um, and so this this comment period that is open now is at least the second time that everyone has seen the material with the exception of the, the changes we've made, um, the revisions we've made based on comment. Great, thank you. Okay, thanks uh, everyone. Um, I will come back to uh, board member Nelson. Um, Jack, can you hear us? Is there, are there any just comments or questions you'd like to you'd like to um, share? Uh, yes, um, I am in the car now, but I have no questions. Thank you. Sure thing. Um, I'm not going to read through the list again, but I'll, I'll give another opportunity for board members if you all have questions. And and maybe at this point, you know, unless it's unless we need more discussion on the actual specifics around phase three, I think it seems like many of us have a lot of thoughts and questions about kind of moving forward, right? Going beyond that, assuming this gets um, approved in uh, Dece the December meeting, December twentieth, I believe. So, um, are there just other kind of questions that uh, board members have that they'd like to bring bring right now? Um, yeah. I will share a couple, one that actually relates to your, your line of comments, um, board member O'Malley. I, you know, I think, especially with new staff coming on, it does feel like uh, there's a lot like coming in 2024 um, that both the board will be responsible for, but we're going to, we obviously lean really, really, really heavy on this uh, amazing team of staff. And then there's some new folks that will be coming on or either are on now, or will be, I think we started to meet some new folks the last couple meetings as well. Um, so I guess, I guess the main thing is I want to make sure that that team, it feels like that team is, is fully, you know, it's fully, staffed up and that we're clear as like the board member kind of about who's doing who's doing what if, if that is um if we're able to share some version of that it's not like i need to know work plans or things like that but i i want to get the sense of like the the flow chart here of like who's connected to what parts of all this work coming up in 2024 um i feel like that just gives me a little more confidence that we're able to to implement and execute right so um and that if we need to be advocates in other ways to push for more resources, additional step, whatever it takes, right? I think that's something that I know I'm happy to, to be doing. So uh, I guess what I'm asking for is like in the new year, once we have maybe, maybe even once we have a sense of like what it looks like to be fully staffed up, uh, it'd be great to get a sense of like who are the names and faces um, and what bodies of work. And then obviously it sounds like there's some areas where you all just kind of you know, help out when needed. So um, I don't want to make this a, a huge project, but I think um, it gives me more confidence that we're able to go into 2024. And it, we obviously have Diana and she's amazing and um, sounds like we'll have someone else to be helping out as well. So um, anyway, that's just one area of, of concern as we go into 2024, or maybe just, I would love to be more, um, more clear about who's kind of doing what. Yeah. Thanks for raising that. And I can definitely work with Diana and we can put together something at a meeting early in 2024, um, giving an overview of our team and who's doing what and some of the things we have planned for 2024. So um, yeah, I will follow up on that. Thank you. 
Thanks, Anna. Uh, board member Palmer Dunning. Um, yeah, kind of in line with that, actually. Um, in the draft language for hardship compliance plans, um, it mentions how um, at our discretion, we can request payment from applicants to get outside consulting. Um, and I, yeah, I know that the board, uh, that the, the, in, that your staff, that the environment department staff, um, there's, that there's hiring to kind of help the board. Um, but do you kind of have a sense of, uh, in what, in what circumstances we would be requesting um, outside consulting, um, like what a hardship compliance plan application might look like that would need outside consulting? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, we are, we've gotten questions kind of about this. I know it's like a little bit vague. Um, so we are thinking that when there is a really technical reason that someone is kind of bringing their hardship and that's based around, um, there may be a circumstance where the city um, and the review board need to have um, outside experts weigh in on that that um, information to be able to make a, a reasonable decision on the on the plan. Um, there's kind of a few things to point out on that piece. One, you know, I think we're thinking that it would be kind of scale to the amount of emissions reduction being requested. So if it's, you know, a small, smaller building where it's fairly straightforward, you know, I don't think we expect this to be for all hardship compliance plans, for example. Um, the owner can also um, not agree to make that payment for the consultant and can propose an alternative way to get the board that information. So it could take a few different forms. Um, so if they're already working a lot with, you know, third party professional engineers, that might be sufficient. Um, but if there's really not enough information in the application um, and they're claiming, you know, some real technical hurdles that the board and city staff aren't familiar with and there hasn't been you know that more robust third party interaction on that that might be a case where we say you know can you hire this or you know can you pay for this consultant fee so that the board can adequately review the um, application um, we're also looking at kind of outside of that um, building up our resources um, and support that staff and the city can offer the board in terms of technical assistance and, you know, have that be both for the board's help and for applicants who are building owners that are looking at decarbonization strategies or looking at, um, you know, how do they work with in their unique situation. Um, so there are other resources that we're we recognize that there's a need for and are working on building up as well outside of that specific piece in the regulations. Great, thanks, Anna. Okay, uh, yeah, so we continue to kind of go through a round of comments and questions. This is, it's sort of gone, I think, not just to phase three, but beyond kind of, I think there's a level of, to me, excitement that we're we're at the end of hopefully these this regulation development phase and sort of starting to move into uh, implementation. So, uh, board member O'Malley, please. So, uh, thank you. Um, the way I sort of envision this next year is the new year starts, it's 2024. There's going to be a sort of a glut initially from some building owners with, uh, looking for either, and, you know, uh, relief in some, in some sense, and then we'll get closer to the reporting deadline in May. You'll probably see some more. And then as we get into the new year, so there'll be some, um, the way I think there will be a consistent deluge, but there's definitely going to be some points where we have a lot more work and clearly the environment department has a lot more work. So I'm curious, and I'm kind of thinking out loud as I say this. So it's, it's a question as much as I'm looking for feedback. Um, is it, and I understand that the the environment department is going to vet a lot of these sort of front run them before it gets to us, but there will still be a lot of work for us. And then we we sort of are entered into this, you know, 30 day or 45 day, I forget what we ended up being um, uh, scheduled to get a response to folks. So I'm curious what we could do uh, 
what we could do on sort of um, through email, if we could do some work ahead of time collaboratively that does not violate the open meeting law and which obviously we all have to and we should abide by. So I wonder what restrictions we would have to work ahead of time um, on certain issues on vetting some of these things, you know, via email would probably be a lot easier. But I also um, am curious if maybe it's worth it, Hannah, to have someone from the law department, you know, join an early January meeting with us and just explain to us exactly what we can and we cannot do so that we're living up to both the letter and spirit of the open meeting law. Yeah, we can definitely look into that. So thank you for raising that. Yeah, I appreciate that, Board Member O'Malley. Thank you. It's helpful. I love that. Um, all right. Any other questions or comments from board members? Um, yeah, please um, just come off mute and speak or, or raise your hand. Either is fine. And then if I, I know as you are maybe thinking about that, I did have one other thought or question, I guess. Um, you know, I was thinking, uh, thinking a lot about, you know, um, once once we finalize phase three, you know, is there a plan in place to sort of, I think we've talked a little bit about this. There are obviously things like the website, there are other tools and forms and things like that. But is there any plan in place to do, I don't know, a video or, or design some materials in a way that just makes it a little bit more accessible and invites people in in a different way because you know there's a lot of depth and detail to this that I, I i think is just overwhelming so uh or can be right so i'm just curious to know how are there best practices are there ways that you all are planning to kind of um work on that uh so that we can help continue to get the word out right yeah thank you for that and thanks for recognizing that you know there's all the work to do write the rules and make all the technical decisions and then communicate that out is a huge piece of that too. So that is a big um, priority that I have for early 2024. Um, we have a few things planned. I mean, certainly we'll go with our usual channels, post everything on the website, have our Birdo newsletter, um, work with um, organizations um, that we've already been working with to get the word out to their members. Um, so you know, be that real estate groups or neighborhood organizations. Um, then we are also, I um, am excited to share that we are, have just closed a inclusive quote contract bid process um, to hire on a um, communications firm that will help us with some like graphic design work um, to help communicate out and like build some more user-friendly resources. Um, as you mentioned, our uh, the Birdo team is is great and none of us are graphic designers. So um, <laughs> so um, we'll be getting a little help on that. Um, so hope to have some more user-friendly, a little bit more accessible resources um, in the coming year. And we'll also be working on translating some materials as well. Oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah, I, I feel like there's nothing like those visual right documents that and, and images that can really help uh, open mm -hmm. things up, right? And it goes yeah. across language and everything else. So that's exciting. Has that um, already been finalized? Are you able to share who it is? Uh, I don't know that I can share it. Well, I I don't know for sure. We're okay. like in the we're in the contracting process. <laughs> I don't think anything has officially been signed yet. Yeah. Okay, let's wait. Yeah. Then. yeah. Great, thank you. Um, any other comments or questions um, uh, from board members? And yeah, I know members of the public, y'all have been uh, watching, listening in. I know um, this is, you know, we we don't have, you know, specific things we're getting feedback on outside of just like thinking about the process going forward. We didn't officially imagine having a formal um, Com public comment period in this section. So um, obviously I would invite if people have questions to, to write them in the chat, uh, do those sorts of things or, or directly um, reach out to our staff, um, the Berta Review Board at boston.gov. Um, but yeah, for board members, uh, again, this is just a, a good chance to kind of 
Aaron, any other questions, comments we have? We will have also administrative updates kind of section following this to specifically talk a little bit more about meetings coming up and, and some of those things. But anything else that you all have comments or questions about? Pretty amazing body of work that we are closing out here uh, going into 2024. So I think that cannot be understated. Very, very thanks to the, the staff team in particular. Uh, yeah, Stephen. Board member Ellis. Thank you. Um, this just my this may be just a minor question uh for the team. Um I'm just running through my notes again to see if there was anything else that might be missing. But um I have in my notes that we as a board need to schedule a time for the annual tenant meeting, which last meeting I suggested it if the city found a, a time, and then as well as we need to set, schedule a time for the application period that uh, Chair Nasweda talked about earlier. Are there any other things that, to your knowledge, that we need to schedule for? Um, I'm just trying to make sure that uh, I, I don't lose it and um, it stays on top of the board's mind. I don't think there are other things that I am thinking of, that I can think of at the moment, um, but we'll certainly follow up if there are other things um, that need to be scheduled and Diana can work um, with the board to schedule those those meetings. Okay, yeah, like I said, minor question, thank you. And Mr. Chair, can I just ask, why Please. haven't we, um, or, or what do we need are we at full complement? Are we waiting for any more appointments? And if not, when are we going to just officially elect a chair rather than do it every week? And the same question, Board Member O'Malley. It's a good, it's a good one. Um, in my understanding, you know, yeah, there 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 is is an appointment process. It's not really an election. Is that correct? Um, for this review board, and that in fact it's uh, appointed by uh, Mayor Wu. Um. And so there are conversations, to my understanding, that has, has been had, that general timeline that was supposed to kind of also go through the end of the year. Um, uh, and then in the new year, um, the hope is to have, to just be able to appoint that person. So I, I don't think we're waiting for other appointments. Is that also true? Um, that's correct. We are not worried, waiting for other appointments and um, we are working on having an update on the more permanent chair, um, but I don't have anything to report at this point. Um, the one thing that I will note will change in the coming year is the city council seat as the city council sets new um, committees. Um, so the new uh, chair of the, I'm going to get the name wrong, but the environment um, climate um, committee will, the chair of that will have a seat on the board. Or their designee. if they Or their designee, certainly, yes. <laughs> That was that was my outgoing uh, <laughs> gift as a former chair of the Environment Committee. So just just to be clear, the mayor will appoint a chair from this current board or an additional. Yes. Okay, fair enough. So yes. so she will. Okay, so well, I think uh, I think that's that's good to know. Okay, thank you. I, I think we're kind of going already into these administrative type updates, so I feel like we should just officially move into that third agenda item um, and uh, and we'll just hear a little bit more from Hannah um, on this, but yeah, we're already talking kind of these type of updates. So please. Great. Um, so the, I'm gonna pull up the proposed meeting schedule for 2024. I believe this was shared at the last um, meeting. Again, just there are some that fall on holidays. So I think that still need to work through what the, the strategy is there with, with Diana. Um, but I did want to um, discuss the option of forgoing the tentatively scheduled next review board meeting, which would happen, on, which is um, for December 18th. As I mentioned before, the APCC has their special hearing on the Birdo regulations on December 20th. Um, so we don't expect that our team is going to have much more to present to this board um, ahead of that meeting. Um, so wanted to just see if um, the board would be amenable to this being our last meeting of 2023 and then the next meeting of the board being um, the first meeting um, of 2024 and on January 8th. Yeah, 
Yeah, good question. And any any um, concerns about that from board members? I personally am okay with that, given yeah the the vote and the APP, APCC hearing um, on the twentieth coming up feels like we're in a, a pretty good place. So I would be happy to forego the December eighteenth meeting. Hey, yeah, I'm fine with that as well. Thanks. 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 All right, Hannah, so it does seem like, I guess, well, uh, it looks like there's no major concerns. Obviously, people, if you have uh, something else comes up, but uh, it looks like right now we're talking about holding off on that meeting. And um, there was no official notice or anything specifically about that meeting that we have to do anything with. So, um, but it looks like we'll we'll aim then for our next meeting being in the new year on January 8th. Great. Um, so those were the only administrative updates that I had, um, you know, we're busy moving forward with all things regulations, but also, as I mentioned, doing some hiring, um, some procurements and trying to keep um, burner reporting, getting that set up for next year. So our team is busy closing out the year. Um, and yeah, I will follow up on um, in the new year, presenting back to this board on all the things that our team is working on, introducing the staff and things like that. So I like that suggestion a lot. Um, but other than that, that is it. And we will certainly um, follow up with all of you um, on the outcome of that Air Pollution Control Commission hearing as well. So um, those are the end of the administrative updates. Great. Thank you, Anna. All right, everyone. I think we are on to the final piece then, which is just to um, adjourn. So is there a motion to adjourn our meeting? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Um, all in favor say aye or, or raise your hand. Aye. 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 And any board members opposed? Okay. Looks like the ayes have it. The motion passes and the meeting is adjourned at 5.30 p.m. Thanks, everyone. Yep. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, everyone. Thank, Thank you. Stay safe. Take care, everyone. Bye.